the quiet record store day. June 18th, 2022 was the quiet record store day. This is Mazzy and, and it was like a light record store day, but I need to show the yin yang, the, the, the opposite of that are these beautiful dark roast coffee beans from Grafeo, San Francisco and San Rafael, California. Old school Italian dark roast beans that I picked up on my recent uh, sojourn to San Francisco in the Bay Area. Now, before we get into the records of Record Store Day, of the light, the quiet Record Store Day, dark roast beans, beans, Grafeo coffee, simply the world's finest coffee since 1935. North Beach in San Francisco is the first place uh, on the West Coast that espresso uh, coffee was introduced. So I go down there. Now I've said this so many times on my channel, the light roast, mid roast hipster people say, if you have dark roast beans, that means they're oily and they're burnt, but they're wrong. So, now I can talk at my regular voice. The reason Record Store Day, uh, June 18th was so light, happened to be on Paul McCartney's 80th birthday, is that these really were spillover titles. Uh, records that the pressing plants were just so busy they didn't have time to press for the last Record Store Day. So I just moseyed in around noon at my local Silver Platters store. It's the closest store to me and it's the physically largest store. It's where I usually do my initial a record store day. I didn't get up early. I didn't wait in line. There's only a couple things I wanted. And this was the first year that I didn't uh, grab any jazz. There was the Miles Davis uh, from the Bootleg Series Live. I just, I wasn't feeling it. I got so much Miles and I love the Miles I listened to. So I didn't need it just to have a record store day. And the same with the some of the other live radio shows and whatnot of jazz. I just, it wasn't happening for me this year. So, I mean, I guess you would say this is a little light. Now, the one record that everybody wanted, and let me start with showing a CD. This is not from Record Store Day, but 1995. I've been a Prince all-in buyer for the duration. During this uh, period of when he was the, uh, the logo, the artist formerly known as Prince, I got the uh, gold experience. I love this record. Uh, the Most Beautiful Girl in the World. I, I love this record. I've had the CD. I didn't get the vinyl at the time because that was during the, in fact, in 1995 is when I sold off a portion of my collection. So I didn't get that, but of course it only came out in Europe. And ironically, um, kind of bittersweet, I did get the album as a part of the Coleman collection. I got a, I got literally about six or seven Prince albums around that CD era that I didn't have. And of course, they ended up being the, some of the rarest, amongst the rarest albums uh, in my collection now. And this record has sold up to $700. I think the latest currently is uh, listed for three or $400 on Discogs. Uh, and this is a fantastic record, a double record. And um, actually, no, it was a single record, right? And just black vinyl. This is the original. Is it a double record? It is a double record. <laughs> Pay attention, Mazzy. Pay attention, Mazzy. Double record, of course it is, because it was from a CD. And, um, you know, I like this record. There's some computer, uh, uh, woman as computer voice things that kind of go in between some of the tracks. Still, I think it's one of his best of this period. Uh, and I love this record, so. I am keeping this record. Of course, there's the Coleman card that I added to the Coleman collection. But um, the record that everybody seemed to want was this. Now, what they did, this is the gold experience. And it'll probably maybe level off a little bit the value of the rare thing, which is fine. I don't buy those records and don't have those records for resale purposes. Uh, I assume it'll retain a lot of its value because of the cover. 
and they changed the cover, which is kind of a nice idea. They put the cover, this was apparently the cover they used as a promo at the time when they sent out to radio and record uh, people and reviewers. And this was the promo cover, uh, this kind of craft, printed craft-like paper cover. Uh, it's printed as the craft paper. That's if you don't know, that's craft paper. That's what they call craft, craft paper. Uh, but I, again, I love this record and the Record Store Day Edition does come in a wonderful polyline sleeve and is this lovely, lovely kind of a deep yellow. So this, they were they pressed a lot, so I think this is going to be easier to get. Don't overpay for this stuff and take a, 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 a moment, take a namaste. <laughs> I keep saying namaste in my videos for whatever reason. I don't do uh, yoga. I don't do the meditation stuff. In a way I do. These are my form of meditation, these videos. But if you wait a few days, I think uh, as of Sunday night, a lot of the record stores uh, that have excess stock will be selling them. So don't pay flipper prices. I got everything I wanted and a couple more things except for two, and I'll, but I'm getting those. So I'll tell you that. The second thing I wanted quite a bit was this. And I'm a huge fan of uh, Billy Bragg. This is the 30th anniversary edition. I do have an original copy of this, uh, but it, it was basically an EP. And they added tracks, uh, which there was another edition like 10 years ago, maybe. They added these extra tracks of live at the Union Chapel in London. Uh, Billy Bragg, kind of this punk folk artist. I first saw him, just unbeknownst to, to me, he was the opening act for Echo and the Bunny Man at the Berkeley Community Theater, 81, 82-ish, I'm thinking, when I first saw Echo, and I didn't know he was, and he showed up, comes out with a little amp, his electric guitar, and just wows the audience. They're dead silence after the first song. He's so great. Uh, socialist, very politically astute, um, very politically wears his politics on his sleeve, very much like the Woody Guthrie. In fact, he worked with Wilco on those uh, Mermaid Avenue records where they took the lyrics of Woody Guthrie and wrote those uh, songs that would become the three records. But I'm all in on Billy Bragg. In fact, search my channel. The Archivist and I did a, a full-on Billy Bragg video because we've seen Billy Bragg together uh, twice, I believe, and I've seen him six, seven times now over the years, but this is a, this is the one I really wanted. Um, I, it wasn't as plentiful as I thought it would be, but because um, it is more limited, but uh, if you like that description, check his music out. He's mellowed out somewhat over the years, but he's still an important artist. A couple things that I, I picked up, this was, I was intrigued by it when I heard about it and I listened to some samples and I just loved it. And it's uh, Esther Morrow, Sister Woman. This originally came out on Fantasy Records. This is a craft reissue. And it's very kind of, it's soulful, gospel, a little jazzy. And it's got, you know, this great rhythm section and uh, of um, Bernard Purdy on drums, Cornel Dupree on guitar, Richard T on organ, Chuck Rainey on bass, uh, and others. But uh, really kind of a funky record, really a wonderful soul album. And I had never heard it before. Uh, the Record Store Day uh, push, but I went and checked it out, and um, it's it's really good. I believe it's a Kevin Gray uh, cut, so it sounds fabulous, and um, it's really nice, heavy cover, tipped on cover. The usual audiophile, slightly upgraded thing. Royal Tannenbaums. Um, I love this movie. Uh, this seems to be one of the... Uh, records that people are very interested in this record store day and again it was delayed double album not only does it have great cuts and some of the cuts i probably have on a lot of other albums but i really like and i haven't heard people really promote how um mark mothersbach from devo did the score on this and uh, the way the record's put together his score kind of is the bumper between songs and it's the nice nice transition pieces which makes it even uh, more wonderful now Wigwam is on here by Bob Dylan, and people who, if you don't know what Wigwam is, it's a song from Self-Portrait, and I have always been a fan of Self-Portrait. Self-Portrait is that Dylan album that people love to hate, Grill Marcus's famous re review, what the fuck is this, or what is this shit of uh, that album, but uh, it got reevaluated when they put out the uh, expanded bootleg series, but it's got the Nico, 
Dylan, Emmett Rhodes, of course, uh, who just passed away in the last couple of years, The Clash, Ramones, Elliot Smith, Nick Drake, Vince Guaraldi Trio, Velvet Underground, etc. Uh, a fantastic collection. Again, you got your, you know, color du jour. It's actually a beautiful green. God, I love that green, right? Love it. Anyway, Royal Tannenbaums. Now, only two more that I actually picked up and then two that are on the way. I was intrigued by this. I saw the cover. I mean, I love this cover. And of course, Trojan, I know of their, you know, wonderful reggae label. And this is the Queens of Trojan. And it's sort of some of the hits and outtakes or deeper cuts from a reggae artists, female reggae artists on the Trojan. I played the first di disc and it's really fabulous. This was, I think this is one of my favorite uh, in terms of just playing it. I played it last night, I blasted it. And it's one of my favorites of records today. So Trojan Records, Love Is All I Bring, Reggae Hits and Rarities by the Queens of Trojan, Trojan Records. Fabulous Jamaican label. You know, every record store today, there's a Kinks things that are somewhat overpriced for what they are. This is an EP. This is based, I believe, on the, it's based on the um, French EP, maybe? Let's see here. Yeah, it's based on a French single, and it's expanded to a 12-inch. And, you know, lovely, you know, I don't get all wonky about not having poly sleeves, but when they charge this much... They need to put a poly sleeve in. So you guys, what is this? Is this universal? I don't want to blame. It's BMG, APCO. APCO, don't cheap out, APCO. God, you're such wankers. Don't cheap out, okay? Add another five cent, 10 cent poly sleeve on these things. All these labels need to start doing this now. If you're going to charge this much, add that, okay? So add it, okay? We will feel better about your work. We might not notice it as much, but when you put these cheap ass white sleeves in now, like back in the days when everyone had not poly sleeves, it wasn't a big deal because records weren't as expensive, but now they are. Now, two things. I do want to show this. This is something I really wanted, and I actually had it in my hand. They had one copy at the store. I think there's only 9,000 copies worldwide. Super furry animals. Uh, I am a big fan. Rings Around the World is one of my all-time favorite albums. It did come out on uh, vinyl, a reissue in the last uh, year and a half, two years, and it's a great record. Psychedelic pop, well spanned. I'm all in on Super Free Animals. What this is are seven tracks, so it's like an, ex an EP, expanded EP, of songs that were on the second disc, sort of the, the B disc, uh, singles, outtake type of things. Not really alternates, but but extra tracks that weren't on the proper album. I do have those on compact discs. I picked this up, and there was someone at the store that really wanted it, and he saw I had it, and he was there any more of those? And I could just see in his face how he wanted it, so I actually gave it to him. I said, "Hey, yeah, you." It was the only thing he wanted. I feel like I I did a good thing. <laughs> Saint Mazzy comes and gives the guy um, a super furry. Actually, uh, this morning I found a copy and I'm getting a copy and I'm not overpaying. Um, I think I'm paying ten dollars. Well, I'm paying ten dollars more, which I think is uh, for me wanting it. I think I did a good deed. Amandamana <laughs> fidamashida. Is that how you do it? Is that how they? Like, um, we all get knighted, <laughs> Sir Mazzy. Okay, just a good deed. I feel good about it, and it worked out. So I'm getting this in the next week. Um, I am getting it. And the other one I didn't get, I didn't even see, is uh, the 12-inch single of Women and Wives, the Paul McCartney single from McCartney 3, and that's somewhat limited, too. But that's on the way, too, and I didn't overpay for that, either. So that's uh, my Record Store Day haul. Drinking my uh, cappuccino in the morning, and thanks for watching, and... You know, I enjoy Record Store Day. This is, again, light. Record Store Day is good. Light beans, coffee beans, are not good. Mazzy loves you. Good now I gotta clean this shit up.